North Weald Airfield in Essex is home to Car Limits, a company that specialises in high-performance driver training, allowing you to be pushed beyond your comfort zone on a sea of tarmac where the only danger is hitting a cone. Car Limits is founded and run by Andrew Walsh, former F1 test driver at Benetton. I spoke to Andrew to find out a little more about Car Limits and why he founded it. It was about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. My uh, cousin died on the road, so I thought I'd stop people dying. Did road type training, just take them around all country lanes, and then realised that we we're going to end up dying on the road as well. So I <laughs> found a nice deserted airfield, which is this one and that's when it started. That's interesting because performance driving, it's not all about going faster, it's actually, you're actually helping people being safer on the road, is that correct? Yeah, because they were all racing drivers that were dying and on the road, so you don't have a yellow flag to say yeah. there's an accident on the corner or a slippery surface flag. Uh, so even with the racing side of things, you're not allowed to find the limits by going over them. Because if you crash, you've lost your car and possibly your life. Yeah. So you've got to stay within the limits and gently build up to it. Whereas here we can fast track that. We put it past the limit so you can learn a lot quicker. Your logo, is, is that's the Lotus Elise. I mean, is that a car that's particularly close to your heart? Yeah, this, when I set the school up, I looked at a few different cars to do it, to encourage a racing driver to come and drive on the road. I thought if you give them something like a Lotus Elise to get in, then they'll come. But there's no stability control, no traction control. They're perfectly balanced. The Elise is ideal for what we do. Their most popular driver training course encourages you to bring along your own vehicle, as understanding its limits along with your own will make you a better all-round performance driver as well as a safer driver on the roads. So I brought along our trusty camera car, the Seat Leon FR, usually working in the shadows, tirelessly in the background on all our other films, spending its time keeping up admirably with other more powerful cars, today it's thrust into the limelight. And although you might not think a diesel Leon is the most exciting car to experience the limits of grip in, I absolutely love this thing. I've been driving it for about six months now, I love the way it handles, it drives brilliantly and everyone else who's kind of had a go in it loves this car, it's great to chuck about and with 180 brake horsepower, 0 62 in 7.5 seconds, it's hardly a slouch either. So I'm actually really looking forward to getting it out there and seeing what it can really do when there are no barriers. I met Mark Robbins who would be instructing me for the day and spoke to him about what we'd be doing. So you're going to teach me to exploit this sleigh on to its absolute limits, is that correct? I will, I will exploit the car and possibly you to your limit as well. So what are the kind of exercises we're going to do? Well, we've got about four or five exercises. One of the first exercises we're going to do is a braking exercise. Okay. And what we're going to do is look at your braking distances, see if we can make changes to that and improvements to that. And we'll see if we can benchmark that. In other words, we may put a couple of cones up and see if we can shorten that distance. Then what we're going to do, we're going to look at a high speed bend. We're going to go through that high speed bend, get you to a point of what we call failure we use something here today which is an imaginary wall um, so if you I like that I like the word imaginary <laughs> in that equation that, that well, appeals that, to me that's great that's what keeps it safe <laughs> so we get to a point where we do the high speed bend we look at your techniques there make some changes we'll look at some uh, radius circles so whether we look at understeer and how we can alter the radius of this circle we may be able to steer the car with the throttle and brakes uh, and we'll also have a look at some of your steering techniques as well okay. so come of this kind of um, what we call rotational steering so we'll have a look at those type of things things today. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take you to, let's say, 60 miles an hour. Okay. And what we want you to do is to stop the vehicle as quickly as possible. I'm not going to give you any tips as yet. What I would literally want you, you to do. You want to see what I can do. I, I want to see what you can do. Whenever you're ready, off you go. Let's try and get to 60. Yep. 40. Okay, well, that's fine. So, brake. I think the seat came down. It did. <laughs> so okay. not, so not, pretty strong brake. Okay, give me one moment. Okay, so that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, what we want to try and do is see if we can stop a little bit quicker. Um, one of the things that you did um, 
you kind of squeezed the brake gently yeah and you kept adding pressure uh, did you feel the ABS come on? Yeah, I did. And it came on nearer the end? It's got, yeah, that kind of feeling to it, that kind of... That kind of bounce back. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So what we want to try and do, when you go to the brake pedal, instead of doing this progressive braking, uh, and what you did as well is you press the clutch down at the very beginning. So what we want to Which try. is sort of the classic kind of the emergency classic, yeah. stop. Kind Which of. You, you'd have to if you was doing 20 miles an hour mm -hmm. as a beginner on the road. So that's what you've been trained to do. But what it does, it kind of affects the brake bias. And what we really want to do is we want to go as fast as you can from the uh, accelerator nice and firmly onto the brake. And you want to get that maximum pressure on the brake, not that squeeze and take half our braking distance to find that maximum pressure. You want to go straight to it in one movement right. and get the clutch it's at the Just red. bang straight on. Yeah, bang straight on. You don't want the ABS kicking in too much. Yeah. If you could get just have it just before the ABS, that'd be fantastic. Right. Brake. Hold it there. That's good. Yeah, and in terms of distance, how much shorter? Uh, well, at least the car length. Yeah. Probably a car and a half. Okay, well done. What was that, 10? 10 meters. 10 meters? 10 meters. And would you get the same speed? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 At least, okay. if at not least. faster. Yeah. Okay, well, let's try it once more, okay. just to see if it was a fluke. All right. So this time, no coaching with me, just with okay. the word brake. Let's see what improvements are. Brake! Oh! Okay, try it once more. There's a point on that braking pressure, which is gonna give you a maximum braking. Okay. And what you wanna do is go to that point on your maximum So it's not about getting it as far back on the pedal as possible, it's no. getting the maximum braking. Yeah, which just is get different. the maximum braking. Right, okay. Break. Hold that pressure clutch. Good. Brilliant. Wow. That's the best you've done. That was only 17 metres short. 17? Jeez. Yeah. It's not very often you get to perform emergency stops from high speed repeatedly. But the more I did it, the more sensitive you get to that feedback from the pedal. It's actually shocking how much information it's giving you. And by the end of the session, I was able to hit that ideal braking pressure, almost like hitting a switch. Okay, so this is where the high-speed corner runs. We, ha we run up through there and come round here, but what's, what's the relevance of this piece of tarmac? Well, this, this drain line, this is our safety margin. Uh, and you, we, we call it our imaginary brick wall. We want to keep within this left side of it where we're standing, but if we go over the other side, that's failure. The beauty of having this as a line um, is that if something goes wrong, if we do lose control, we have a good, I don't know, 200 meters of safe space okay. to, to get it wrong within. Okay, let's get going. Brilliant. So all I want you to do for this first exercise mm -hmm. is with your systems turned off. Yeah, so as much as they can as, be. As much as they can be. So it's more down to you as a driver. That's good. I want you to go around this corner and let's try for our first run, 60 miles an hour. 60. 60 miles an hour and we'll see what happens. And just do your normal driving. Just okay. your normal driving. <laughs> like an idiot then. That's it. <laughs> okay, so that's 60 there. 60, keep it at 60. Okay. Get ready to make the turn. Not yet, not yet. Turn now. Whoa. Well done. Dramatic. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I felt, I mean, because this is, says that you can turn traction control off, but ES, it's on ESC Sport, so it still has some kind of, it's yeah. still something helping you out. I there mean, was. It, you can feel it kicking you, you in. You weren't using you? your brakes at all, were you? No, and no. you feel that, is it the, on the yeah, back? That's that kind of. Yeah, the, the, the brakes were probably applying even diagonally on this car to bring you to a really? Yeah, they, I mean, could, they could well have been, yeah. Uh, so how was that? That, that felt was, like... That was good. I, um, I didn't hit the wall. No, you didn't hit the but wall. But it was very dramatic. It was. <laughs> there was a lot of slipping and sliding yeah. that we didn't really need to do. Okay. Um, and partly because of your input with the steering wheel. Right. So you, you put a lot of steering in, the car um, started to slide, mm -hmm. and then instead of relaxing your grip on the steering wheel, you kept your hands really quite tight on that wheel. Um, the car would naturally try and undo. So uh, yeah. for fun, what we're gonna do, and this isn't the way I'm gonna suggest that you normally drive, right. but just for fun, what I want you to do is just to put one finger on the steering wheel. One wheel. finger on the wheel. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna pull the car through the corner at the same speed using one finger. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, and now just pull down gently, put more water with the steering wheel and compare the difference. Wow. Oh my God. Just no drama, very easily did not crash into the wall. Okay, so. And that was, so basically that's kind of teaching you that the, the minimum input is actually better and rather than kind of gripping it tightly and being yeah. all tense, it is actually a relaxed kind of. And, and the car naturally doesn't want to go into uh, a spin. The mm. car naturally wants to self-correct. And by us pulling down to you feel the resistance on the wheel, what you then felt was hopefully, and I'm going to ask you this question now before I preempt it, could you feel the steering wheel undoing and reapplying? Yeah, well? no, yeah. it was, it, so it, it, the car can do most of the work for you if you yeah. kind of... Yeah, it's a case of listening to it. Yeah, yeah. rather okay. than just kind of grabbing it by the rein and saying you're going to, because that never really works, does it? Okay, well let's go around there at um, 70 miles an hour. Okay. So we're adding 10 miles an hour, which is quite a big leap in yeah. speed. But I want to, this time, is to do the same thing with your hands. In other words, use both hands on the wheel. Yeah. But imagine that you've got that same sensitivity that you would have with one finger. With one finger. Okay. That's 70. That's 70. It's still by. So I'm turning now. Oh, well done, well done. And what you notice there, even though we were 10 miles an hour quicker than yeah. our first attempt. It was still more, much more, more, more tidy. Time. I mean, you could yeah. feel it trying to slide, but it was... Yeah, well, I mean, two things to consider. Speed has increased by 10 miles an hour, and the surfaces have just changed. Yeah. So they're getting slippery. Yeah. Once the less is more mantra had gone into my head, I was able to turn my attention to other important factors, such as vision. The saying is you'll always travel in the direction you're looking and nervously staring at the camera crew as I approached them at 75 miles an hour meant I was actually far more likely to hit them. We kept increasing the speed five miles an hour at a time and it reached a certain point where hitting the wall for me became almost unavoidable and I managed to hit it in some pretty spectacular ways. Okay then, Nick, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at some rotational steering. Uh, rotational steering um, isn't something we practice uh, for most people, but it's a really great technique because you can go from having your hands nice and parallel and straight on the steering wheel, I say straight, side to side, but with the wheels of the car straight. And basically what you do is you wind your arms down and round until your forearms are about, about to touch, and then the low hand comes over the top, grabs the side of the steering wheel, winds yourself all the way round till you've got full lock. And the benefit of that is your hands only come off the steering wheel once. Other steering techniques that people use and the way that we're taught to drive is to have this kind of shuffling steering technique that's known as push and pull. The problem with that is you might have to do six or eight or maybe even ten hand movements to get the steering wheel from straight to full lock. So like... Have a go. Have a go. So let's, let's, let's count it. Let's see what um, okay. a beginner would do. One, two, three, four. Four movements, oh, yeah. yeah, and then back. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. Oh, wow, to go lock yeah. to lock. That's it's it. Lock forever. To, yeah, it is. Okay. So one more full lock to your right, and that's the wheel straight. Yeah. So rotational steering, hand side by side. Steer to your right now until your forearms almost touch. Hand comes from below, over the top, grabs the side of the bar, swing it round now, and you're on full lock. Okay. That's it. Just a little bit more to the right, yes, and that's full and lock. Done. So yeah, it's, that's so it. So as, as soon as you can't do it anymore, you switch yeah. around. And what you do with practice, you actually get used to avoiding your forearms from touching and come to that natural stop. You realise they're about to touch, and you can just take your hand over the top. So start winding the steering in. Hand comes from below, winds over to the top. Keep going. If you hit the lock, stop. Full lock. Yeah. Good. Gently accelerate so the steering wheel comes straight. Undo now, and there it is. You, okay. made, it, you made it look too easy. <laughs> okay, wind the steering. It is in. very slow. It is slow. All right. So to get a little bit more pace in the steering, just gently accelerate on the exit now for me. Good. Excellent job. So wind it in again. Keep going. A little bit more pace. Accelerate now. Good. Wow. Yeah. It's yeah. It feels like it's a lot less to do than, it is. than before because I'm, yeah, I'm going around the cone and not having to do all that much movement and it's a lot, I think it's a lot quicker. I mean, so if I, I just, now. Uh, at this speed, if I tried to kind of feed it through, I guess. Yeah, yeah if you doing, did the push and pull now. Yeah, you're just doing too much yeah. with your hands. So look, then one, two, yep. Yeah, exactly. And then your hands actually didn't arrive when you did that push yeah. and pull steering technique at the correct point. So do the preferred technique now. There it is.
This method not only gives you much less to do, it's safer as one hand is always in control on the wheel at all times. Once the muscle memory started to kick in, it proved an absolute winner, and picking up speed I saw just how beneficial it can be to know what position the wheel is at all times, without even looking, something I'm sure would come in handy when I had bigger things to focus on. Okay, so uh, whenever you're ready, what we're going to do is we're going to wind it on to uh, full lock. Can you do that for me now? Yeah. So wind it on to full lock. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go around on full lock, mm -hmm. uh, trying to keep a constant speed until we feel the front of the car starting to push wide. Uh, that's where we start to get our slip angle. Um, and basically what's happening, if this is the tyre and my fingers are the blocks, the tread pattern here, we get to a point where the tyres are naturally can flex. And then you get to a point where these blocks can't flex anymore and they start to slide. And the way to get them to stop sliding is just to undo the steering and the fraction to get them to turn in. There is an optimum slip angle, and we're going to look at a little bit of that today as we go around. So okay. start to pull away nice and gently in first, and start, start to accelerate until you feel the car go wide. A little bit more, okay, a bit there more we go. power, a bit more power, okay. then undo the steering an inch, and there's your turning. Wow. Good. Back on the steering again, undo an inch, there's your turning. That's unbelievable. Okay, wind it in. Is this intuitive or counterintuitive? Very counterintuitive. Okay, and then just bring it to a stop. <laughs> well, it's going feel? in circles for that long. <laughs> Dizzy, but um, yeah, it that is incredible because you, you hear that you know you to correct understeer, you take your steering lock off, but it's a sort of a counterintuitive thing. And when you're actually doing it, and just to actually feel that taking it off makes such a tighter turning circle, yeah. it just makes such a difference. And how much did you have to take off? Very small, an inch. Yeah, yeah, an inch, yeah, just a just, tiny amount. Yeah. Just Well, it's an inch, it's until you feel it, but often it's around about an inch. But yeah, very good. And if you think of most of the things we've already done today, sometimes less is more. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, but of course, listening to the car, which is what it's all about. By keeping the throttle in a single position, I was truly able to explore how understeer worked, the practical always trumping the theory. We then practiced how by keeping the lock on I was able to use oversteer and understeer to position my car using only the throttle. Again, the understanding wasn't new to me, it all made sense on paper, but actually playing with the car and feeling the sensations I found invaluable. With the learning over, it was time to tie all the separate lessons together for the Car Limits track, if you can call a series of cones a track. Mark jumped into the Leon to show me how it was done and set a sprightly 1 minute 1 second lap in the wet. I set myself a target to get within 5 seconds of his time, and after several practice runs, it was time for my final lap. And stop. Keep it to the right. Brakes on hard. Gear change. Off everything, full power, straighten the wheel now. That's better, that's good. Now third, brakes on. Keep it straight before you brake. Good, full power, undo the wheel, undo. Good, keep to the left. Brakes on, gear change now. Good, out to the right. Brakes on. One sec, one sec, within one second. The day over, Mark and I had a final chat about my lap. Did some of the things that we did during our training session ending up with the laps, do you think that helped with your timing? Oh, absolutely. Like all, everything came into play, whether it was braking for a cone or taking the lock on and feeling the oversteer, understeer, using the throttle to turn and the brake to turn indeed. Just pretty much all the four exercises were tailor-made for that lap really. And it just, it made me feel so much more confident. I think if I'd have done the lap at the beginning of the day, at the end, we'd have seen how ludicrous the time difference would have been. And what type of driver do you think would benefit from this? 
well, I think someone who's smooth and yeah. kind of s smooth and steady and yeah, yeah it's, it's not as uh, balls to the wall as you might hope racing driving is but it's 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 definitely faster. Do you think this fits in with your road driver in terms of safety as well? Well absolutely I mean now I know if uh, I have to make an emergency stop I'm going to be stopping a lot shorter than I would have done at the beginning of the day and that alone I think is worth worth having done this. Good and most importantly did you enjoy it? Oh absolutely. Brilliant Nick thank you. Cheers. Great to meet you. Nick. Thanks. I found car limits personified their own mantra that simplicity is key. It's very easy to get overwhelmed on days like these, but Car Limits stripped it back and kept it simple, with four key exercises that not only improved skill, but understanding of seemingly basic concepts through practical driving, which for someone like me was a revelation as I learned best from doing. Not only will I be able to stop much quicker in a potential accident on the road, I'll also be much faster on the track, and therefore makes Car Limits a course well worth your while for drivers of all abilities.